hands together in a warm, warm nerd you welcome to Felicia Day! Day! <laughs> wow. Wow. This is a rowdy crowd. Rowdy, rowdy. That was I love. I love that. By the way, we uh, we we <laughs> we were we were back back in the back. We were talking about commiserating about how when you're doing an event or you're doing things at at, at Comic Con, and literally the, the, you know when you get a text from somebody, it's the same person. You don't hear from them all year long. Same then, five or six people. Same five it's or like six a very people. Shallow... That will then that will then like text you and be like, Hey man, uh, you doing your thing at Comic Con? Uh, just checking. I'm like, you know damn well I'm doing my thing at Comic Con. You just want to hey, get in the party, friend. Schmuck. Hey yes. friend, can I have an invite for me and 14 of my best 14 friends? 14 of my best friends. But by the way, but the reason I bring it up is because in the same breath, though, I am guilty of this because we don't we we're busy. You're very busy. You're, no, and you're I'm busy. Bu and I'm bu we're busy. busy. We're busy. busy. We're busy. But we busy. come down, we come down to the wire, like putting Nerd HQ together, and uh, often with the panels, you know, it's really about like who's going to be in San Diego at that time, and I don't know. I'm off gallivanting wherever the hell I am. And then I come back and we have meetings. We're like, okay, where are we at with panels and stuff like that? And then I, I know where we have some windows, and um, and so then in it. it I'm guilty of this because then I reach out to you around the same time every year, and I'm like, "Hey, friend. hey Felicia, <laughs> hey you Zach, got, you got an hour to what, spend with what us is your over Thursday." Yeah. yeah, but to your credit, you're such a rock star, and you come through well, and you support always... us, and you're awesome, Felicia Day. I love what you do. From the moment you inspired a lot of what I've done, you know, in my community. I just love, you know, you're you're the OG. <laughs> You're the OG I'll take off site. I'll I'm the easy E of uh, of nerddom. I, I, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I hope not. He died. That was bad. That was no. not. That was not good. I think the first time I ever stayed out past two a.m. was at a as a party that you invited. Yeah. No way, really. I mean, I'm, wait. The first time in your I'm life you ever stayed out over day. I mean, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I've, I've I've appreciated it because I came to her. By the way, I, I went to you, and. Hardwick and Fillion and Seth Green. You were the first four people. That was the first year, right? It was, no, yeah, it was the first year, but it was four, the, before we did it the first year. And you were the first four people that I went to and I said, I got this crazy idea. I want to go do like my own little con at the con and we'll do panels and parties and stuff like that. And you've continued to support us. And it's a good vision to support. And the fact that you help an amazing charity. Is oh, like, sure. I mean, I mean yeah. look, I think, I, well, part of the reason why is because I never wanted to, I didn't want to come to you and be like, hey, come to a, could you come to a panel so I can make money off of you? Like, that just seemed... <laughs> Man, yeah. Although, if you okay. want to pay me. Um, no. But that <laughs> I wish seemed, I had money. Yeah, right? I but it, that, that just didn't seem right. I was like, I want, to, I want to do cool shit, but I don't want to... Like, we'll go make money from sponsors and selling merch and stuff. I don't yeah. want to make money off people that I know or don't know no, that are in the nice. business. And it's also community built. You know, people yeah. come together to be like, hey, let's all do something good together and have a little more intimate experience than everybody yeah. gets on the floor, you know? So... Sure. Yeah, we have the same thing over at Petco. People can come and have a play some games, you know. Exactly. Just do something simple and give people a little bit of AC. And yeah. It yeah. makes the experience. It is the, so balls hot out there, you guys. Yeah. How is I the like, AC feeling in here right now? Everybody cool? Is this okay. an improvement from last year? Is the tiered seating an improvement from last year? Beautiful. All right, I'm out of here. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye. Just, uh, who's got some questions for Felicia Day? Nobody. No. How quick. Yeah. Oh, good. We have some. Yeah, no, you get to pick them. Unless oh, you want me to pick them, but oh, it's okay. your panel. You well, you're the front guy. Yeah, so, front guy, go. Front man. Front man. Oh, right behind you. <laughs> He's about to tackle her. He's like, give me that yeah. mic. <laughs> I guess I scared him off. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, I don't, it's, your ball, it's the, the ball's hot thing, you know. <laughs> I don't, I'm sorry to talk about your balls. <laughs> so awkward. Um, my name is AJ, and I was just curious, given everything that has been happening on Twitter of late, um, I saw you responded to what's taking place. I was just curious if you wanted, could expand on some of that and maybe just touch on what you've had to go through so that people know what's going on because it really is shameful. Oh, thank happening. you. Yeah. Um, I mean, <laughs> what is you, what? what could, could you? I don't even well, know what's going uh, on. Well, Leslie, the, the actress from the Ghostbusters, she quit Twitter because. Oh, Leslie Jones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, she, she quit Twitter because basically what I understand happened was that somebody coordinated like a 4chan attack on her, and it was basically that guy Milo, who is very famous, if was one of the people who led the whole Gamergate thing, which I talk about in my book, which was a very un unpleasant experience for me. And um, they finally did something about it, and they're tr I think they're going to take some steps, which is like 
a couple years too late, guys. But uh, uh, having gone through that myself and a, and a, a version of it, you know, it's, it's, it's sad that it took a celebrity who's very high profile to make something different happen, but I'm just glad they're doing something. So they're going to be more aggressive about um, g kicking people off the service who are harassing people, as well as um, um, having the ability to become a verified user, whoever, but whoever you are, so that you have a check mark next to your name and you have a little bit more accountability to the things you do. On so what you're saying is I'm about to lose my check mark. Is what yeah. you're, is what you're saying? I'm so they're going to get real that. stringent, guys. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, I think it's really important, you know, I went off on a Twitter, Twitter, like, rage because I got so angry about it. Because, honestly, we as people give our lives to these platforms online for free. I mean, we're all working for someone so they can make billions of dollars off of their IPOs. I mean, that's literally what we do every day online. And, you know, when you put it like that, you're like, well, I'm going to log off and live in the woods. But you can't, you, <laughs> you don't want to do that because we I'm going to log off and go live in the woods and then get online again. Yeah, <laughs> because there's nothing to do in the woods. <laughs> there's nobody around me. So, like, we don't want to do that because the online world enhances our lives a lot. But the platforms, it's not public space out there, you know? Like, they, it's their, like I like to make a, 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 the analogy. It's a restaurant. They're running a restaurant, and they're serving people and... and if somebody comes in and punches you in the face or says, hey, you're stupid and I'm gonna put, or something much worse, um, you have to do something about that person in your establishment. And like, we have to treat the private spaces, if they're gonna make money off of people, they have to treat it like private spaces and make it safe for people. Or basically we're gonna log off and go somewhere else. So I like the idea that online they're doing something about it. Uh, you know, it's a slippery slope because then you start censoring people, you selectively tell people, I don't like what you're doing, I don't like what you're doing, but, you know, there are egregious uh, harassment incidents, like, especially the Gamergate incident that I, you know, was not even the worst front of it, and yet nothing really happened after that, so at least they're doing something, and my, my I guess my message to everybody would be, like, just be as aggressive as possible about knocking people off your invite list. Like, if they come in and they're like, hey, you're ugly, I'm like, well, I don't want to hear from you again. You would not invite that guy to your, ba you know, your, your barbecue, right? You'd be like, get out. Well, just block him and mute him. And I've done that, and I did it so well over the last couple of years, I didn't even know that a lot of that stuff was happening. Oh, yeah. yeah, and then when you search your name, I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Never search your name on Twitter. Just don't. Uh, anyway, that's a good question. Okay. Uh, next. That is that. That is uh, just really quick. Just to yeah. just to add to that is, it is such it is such a gnarly thing where where we're sitting in the middle of societally speaking because where is that line? Where is that line where you're still allowing people freedom of speech, and who? Because it gets very subjective. What some people think is harassment, and other people think like grow some thicker skin, like well, that person was just disagreeing with you, yep. that's not harassment, and then who gets to decide all that stuff? But certainly nobody should be getting harassed. No, yeah. Nobody should be getting, like when people are making, I mean. Or feeling unsafe. Oh, I yeah. mean, I felt unsafe because, I mean, I wrote it on my boat, people show up at my house, you know, yeah. a very unsafe situation. Like, being threatened by, my life being threatened by people, getting restraining orders against, you know. To me, some of the yeah. worst things I've ever heard are online gaming. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's unreal. Yeah. I, I, 12 year olds, I, mostly. Oh, like 12, yeah, 12 year olds <laughs> saying the most racist, misogynistic, like horrible shit. I'm like, what? Where is your, where are your parents? Yeah. Clearly, they're not in the same room. And if they are, then you all need to get slapped because I can't believe what's coming out of your mouth right well, now. Well, it's almost like sus we have a society that agrees on some rules, right? Well, well yeah, but it's, but, it, but it's also become a society of anonymity. That's Well, that's me, the thing. Yeah. But, but if you look at the internet where it's just pockets of society, where people are sort of redefining what's acceptable and what's cool. Right. And then I think actually that's translating into real life, people being a lot bolder and saying things that are, I mean, I, you know, more aggressive. I mean, even the kind of crazy, all the crazy violence we're having, they could trace to people in online forums, like... You know, it's really scary what the fragmentation um, and people being steeped in a worldview that they that is very radicalized, but they think is okay because a hundred other people in a forum say, "Yeah, it's okay to think like that." So I think there's a lot of issues online that we're going to have to deal with going forward, and hopefully, it's just a growing pain that we get through and we can kind of create a, a good baseline of behavior, sipping tea together, <laughs> having some. Well, let's tea. not become British. I don't want to do that. Why well, not? Hot. I love using my accent. <laughs> Where are we going, um, Mary Poppins? I don't know. Let's go down there and get a pet. <laughs> a tuppence. Oh, God. Next, Next question. question. <laughs> you got it. You got it. You pick them. Oh, oh, 
oh, oh, uh, let's do, oh, you have an a, a animal on your head. Animal head. Animal head person. <laughs> animal head lady. Yes. I can't wait for AR. By the way, I'm obsessed with Pokemon Go. I can't wait for AR so when I have a contact lens yeah. in my eye, I'll be able to look at you and be like, Janice. <laughs> <laughs> right? It'll just be a little pop-up, like, my name's Janice. Guys, it'll happen, all right? It, I invented it right here. Anyway. Hi, Felicia. My Hi. name is Nina. <laughs> it's not Janice. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that, this was a very important conversation we were having, so I feel silly for stepping into a light and fluffy question. Oh, no, bring it, please, bring it. Please. please. Bring it. You do so much, you do so much, and it's... So much, um, but anyways. I know. <laughs> right? Um, whoops. Um, however, um, I was just wondering if there is something that you haven't done that you would really, really, what's on your bucket list? What would you really like to do that you haven't done? Oh my God. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I really want to live, I want to take a baking, I want to be like a 1980s woman who does like a memoir about being an expat and I want to learn how to make baguettes in France <laughs> for like a month. And I want to ride a bicycle like Amelie. That is one of my favorite movies of all time. Oh my God, it's my favorite movie. Uh, Did you... <laughs> what, what, what? They're, what? Do they're, they're doing a musical version. I know, I know. What the fuck was that? I know. No, 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 no. By the way, look, it could be amazing. I personally have a slight aversion to Broadway musicals that are movie ports. I have a, I have know, a hard time I with know, that. I know, I got you. I have a hard time with that. They're especially, usually scummy. Especially if they are amazing movies that I love so much. I'm like, yeah. don't touch that. It's kind of like I'm trying to make a Groundhog Day musical on Broadway. I'm like, oh, what in no. God's name? Don't do that. It's Groundhog Day. You can't touch Groundhog Day. It's but usually I mean, like making a there. video game out of a movie. Like, it's always awful. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Unless it's a Lego yeah. video game. It's yeah, yeah. awful. <laughs> right? It's only a branded thing that is video. ever good. They're so good. You build. They're so good. Like, brr. Anyway. Anyway. Did you have a question, Nina? Oh, the bucket list. We got it. Oh, yeah, you did it. You, you answered. I've... Making Nina. baguettes and riding bikes in France like Amelie. I just, I want to be an expat. Doesn't everybody... Doesn't right it? now, we all kind of want to be expats. Jeez Louise. Oh, boy. I'm Let's not, not go down that road. Well, I, I read somewhere that I'm, I'm like a quarter Polish. And if you're Polish, guys, if you have like a grandmother or a grandfather, this is real, actually. If you have a relative that's pretty close that emigrated from Poland for between like 1900 and 1950, there's a good chance that you could become Polish. So if you have a direct line from, a, uh, especially a guy, like if you have a grandfather or something, there are legal ways you could spend like like $4,000 and get Polish citizenship. Yeah, I hear the weather's great out there. <laughs> Next question. Uh, over here, lady. <laughs> Anna. Yeah, yeah, boom, right there. Anna. Not Janice? Not it's, Janice. It's Nicole. Uh. We're gonna find a Janice. We're, We're gonna going find with one. the ends today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed your singing in Dr. Singalong's blog, and I was wondering Thank you. if you have any plans for future musicals. That's a really good question. Well, I think that in Mystery Science Theater, <laughs> which I'm gonna be shooting soon, I'm very excited about it, guys. I wrote on it, which was super fun. Uh, I love it. Congratulations, writing. by the way. Thank That's you. So awesome. Well, I mean, I was. This a girl fan. is such a dynamo rock star, by the way. You guys, have, I mean, you guys Aww. know. That's why you're at her panel right now, but continue. Hopefully. You wrote on it. Continue. Yeah, I wrote on it. Um, uh, I wrote on it. And well, here's a true story how I got that job, guys. I did not get that job on merit. I got it, well, I mean, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I was at Salt Lake City Comic Con and I saw Joel in the green room. And um, I'm a huge fan. My brother and I didn't go out of the house when we were younger because we were homeschooled in a cage. It's a long story, read my book. Um, but like, that was our favorite thing. I'm not kidding. Uh, that was our favorite thing growing up to watch MST3K together. And my brother's a hardcore fan. Like I even got him a signed poster off of eBay one year for his birthday. So I sold Joel, I was like, oh, I'm gonna rub his face in this. Like just spiteful. I'm gonna go get a selfie with Joel and rub his face in it. So I go up to Joel and we start talking. I get a job. <laughs> That's literally. But what happened. else did you have to do? Nothing else. Nothing else. It involved a puppet. It's That's weird. 
<laughs> my, ha my hand is small. Let's just not go there. Anyway. <laughs> Um, I'm really excited. So evidently, I think one of the rewards of the Kickstarter was that uh, the guy who wrote Frozen, Bobby, uh, some. Um, uh, uh, Fernand, um, it's Fernand. Bobby. Lopez. Lopez, yeah, Bobby Lopez. Um, he is going to write a song. He's going to be so made... mad that I forgot that, by the way. It's okay. I put you on the spot. I follow him on Twitter, and I see his face. You know, it's, I don't, I've never met him, so it's fine. That's okay. Um, he's going to write a song, and so hopefully I'll be singing in that. What? I know. A Bobby Lopez song? I know. Crazy. Crazy. Um, but this year, I actually, like, just really cut a lot of things out, and I'm trying to. I've been taking some singing. I'm trying to get back into shape. And, um, I mean, I tried to work out. That didn't work. <laughs> but I've been doing a lot more acting and writing, and I'm so much, I'm very happy. So thank you for asking. Hopefully that will be awesome. And if there are future projects, I would love that, because I did go to four singing lessons, and I feel much <laughs> <laughs> way better about my abilities. Next question. Next question. Next question. Oh, front row. Front row. Your name is N Not Natasha. Janice. Nat Wait, nachos? Not, what did not Janice. Oh, not Janice. Not Janice works for everybody except Janice. Yeah. And, and actually, well, I think it's a winning everybody else has been an N, I just Natasha. I was like, Nat because my name is Allie. <laughs> <laughs> so, Felicia. Boy. Um, yes, Allie. I just wanted to thank you for being such an inspiration for young women in an industry that's kind of seen as kind of a male-dominated um, industry. Thank you. Uh, and my question for you is, what's something that scares you that you'd like to tackle and overcome? Oh. Um, Other than a grizzly bear. <laughs> uh, oh, gosh, what scares me? I mean, I live in fear. <laughs> I have a, a very high strung. <laughs> I'm always, when I'm driving on the road, I'm convinced I'm going to hit a child. <laughs> Whenever I go anywhere, I have a slight headache. Oh, it's meningitis. <laughs> any, kind of, any kind of turbulence, I'm dead. I start writing a will on, like, the, the, the Airways magazine. Just so there's... there's um, you know, I, I always do... I, and yet, at the same time, I always do things that scare me for some reason. So, I mean, to me, uh, writing a book was very scary, a nonfiction book. I'd love to write a fiction book because that's very, that terrifies the crap out of me. But then I was thinking, oh, if I've said it in France, um, I could tax deduct the two months I spent in France making baguettes. So look for that novel out, 2019. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, uh, somebody actually at, at the panel earlier today asked, uh, what was the biggest failure that you learned from? And I, in thinking about it, I was like, I've never learned from a success in any way that I have learned from failure. And a lot of my life um, was li lived in fear of failure, like my, a perfectionist syndrome that was just like off the chain, you guys. I was so good at it. Um, <laughs> and I realized that once I really got myself out of that cage of perfectionism, that's when I started to grow as a person and find who I was and not be so careful to be on the straight and narrow of what other people needed from me or thought of me or, or the pressure that they put on me to be perfect. Um, I, I kind of took that internally and I just I caged myself in a way. And when I started being like, yeah, just screw it, I'll do whatever I want, not thinking about that, and I might try this and fail and I'll learn on the other side so much more about myself, like that really is when my world opened up. So, I mean, I would encourage anybody every day to do little small failures. I mean, you'll learn way more about yourself and the world than you ever, ever learn trying to like make, make everything perfect every day. What did you do? What did you, yeah, that's a round of applause for that. Yeah. <laughs> what did you do personally, uh, or what are steps that you took to help you to let go? Because I struggle with that a lot. I hate failing and, and yeah. because I hate failing other people and I don't and I, I want and not I don't feel like I have a perfectionism but I, I'm sure that I probably do but I just you know we find ourselves wanting to do great so what is what how are you able to just go like it's okay I mean it's really tough like I mean we I think if you have a certain standard that you have in life you're like I, it's not gonna live up to it but if it I think you you have to push yourself beyond what you know you're capable of and then try to make that as good as possible. Right. And accept yourself if some, that you did the best you could. Like, I can look back and, you know, I just started making videos in my garage and then it turned into this, 
you know, into a career, and then I became a personality, and then I had a business, and like so much fail failure by mind along the way, but really success as well. And but to me, like when I when I when I let go of my of of the decisions I made that I regret, I think mostly it's regret. You can't live with regret looming in your past because it's like anvils on you. And I know after a lot of therapy and writing a memoir and meeting so many people in this world who have stories that are so beyond mine, um, I know that, that every time that I made a decision in the past, I, I was doing the best that I possibly could. I was giving everything. And who I was at that time might not be who I am now making that decision. But there's no way I could have known five years ago not to say yes or no to that thing. There's no way, but I was, I was doing the best I could as the person at that moment. And you have to kind of just look at yourself as this fluid, changeable thing. Nobody is ever static. I'm not the same person I was yesterday because I've experienced so many things, small things. And if you accumulate that over a year or two years or five years, you're a different person, you know? And if you're not, you're not pushing yourself and growing. So I think that's the key, knowing that you're doing the best you can at the time, but there is gonna be failure and you're gonna take so much more from that failure in your life than you ever will with success. Success, success is just like, whoo, I didn't mess it up. Failure is like, well, what did I do wrong? All right, let's not do that again. I don't know. Rock Maybe. and roll. <laughs> Next question. Oh, way back, way back, way back. In the way, way back. What's your name? Lorelai. I was gonna say Kelly. <laughs> I bought one of your Embrace the we Embrace Your Weird shirts. Yay, thank you for that. Thank um, you. And I was wondering if you were going to do another campaign. Um, I did a campaign when my book came out because um, uh, I really wanted to do something after I met a lot of people in person um, who said, wow, uh, this really helped me be myself and uh, be proud to say something that I was ashamed of. And when I met a lot of people on tour who said that, especially young girls, I was like, oh no. <laughs> no, we're doing something about this. So uh, I had this great, I picked this great uh, uh, Stomp Out Bullying, which is an amazing charity, which educates uh, uh, kids uh, in the areas of bullying, helps, helps people overcome um, that, and also to persevere in the face of bullying. And we did this, uh, the charity shirt, Embrace Your Weird, which is basically a theme of my book that I just wanted to make do some good in this world. So we gave all the money to this amazing charity. Um, and I love, I love the fact that you're asking about um, doing it again. I would love to do something. You know, I, we'll see. It just had to be the special right thing. It spent, I spent like two months design, you know, redoing the design on that. So, you know, I'm kind of a perfectionist. <laughs> Trying to get away. Oh, we've been over that. Yeah, we, 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 we we've got that. that. I would love to do another one and I promise it'll be cute too, okay? And do some good for the world. That's all, like, baseline t-shirt, cute, good for the world. By the way, by the way, speaking of speaking of weird, uh, I ran across. Speaking of weird, uh, <laughs> we're at Comic Con. Um, yeah. No, I I recently came across this quote, and I'm I can't believe I'd never found this quote before, but it's kind of become my favorite quote that I'm going to paraphrase because I I don't know. It's your favorite know, one. It's you my can't favorite remember. quote, but I, I, don't know, I don't. <laughs> trust me, I'm with you. I remember certain things. Um, anyway, but the, but it was this quote, and and I was it was so awesome. It's from Dr. Seuss. Because the guy was. A Can't remember a Dr. Seuss. No, 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 no. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. His name is I Theodore think, Geisel. I think I'm paraphrasing, but I don't. But I, I might not be. But essentially, the quote was, "You have to be odd to be number one." And I, as soon as I read it, I was like, "That is one of the bomb, most bomb ass quotes I've ever read in my life." And not that we should be all trying to be number one. I don't think life is a competition necessarily, but to to the extent that we're trying to shoot for excellence and make awesome stuff. And, and, and to encourage people that, yeah, be weird. Be weird, embrace your weird, embrace your oddness, embrace what makes you different, because that ultimately will be something that kind of elevates you. I mean, that's the only thing that will make you stand out in this yeah, world yeah. for yourself or in, in your career or yeah. whatever. Like, we are, on, we are literally the only people who are us. Yeah. I mean, we're all you. What? I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you think about that, you're literally the only person who can imprint the world in the way you do. And if you are sitting here, like somebody's saying, oh, you're too, you're too odd, or your interest in this is not cool, or I don't like the way that you behave in this way. You're, you're conforming to some sort of like vanilla humanity that doesn't necessarily allow you to do what you need to do, which is make your imprint. Whether it's in small ways, just on 
you know, supporting your friends or in big ways in what you create or what you do with your career. So like that's what really makes me angry when I see people abandoning things that that, that fuel them, that 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 let them channel their passion in an individual way. And because one one guy is like, he like geek stuff. Well, I'm not gonna date you. You know, like, who's that guy? <laughs> He's a scrub. I was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. We had a whole thing with the TLC scrub. Hanging out the passenger side oh, of his best the friend's ride. Oh, the ladies, you're a scrub. What a dick. Ugh. Don't be that guy. I mean, scrub. Scrub. Next question. Yeah. Next question over here with the blue ha arm. Oh, that's you. Okay, bye. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm Julieta from Argentina. Everybody loves you in Argentina. So. What? <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding? No. I really want to go. I have a, a like a, a Pinterest board of South America. One you day, Patagonia. You should go. We I, have a Comic Con. A tiny okay, uh, so one day. You're invited. In, invite me. Yeah. Uh, I'm there. Do you have the official authority to invite her to this Comic Con? <laughs> okay. Let's She's got a wig on. It's cool. It's cool. Uh, well, well. Okay. Um, my question was, uh, given that you do so many things, how do you manage to manage your time, you know, with the... How do I manage to manage my time? Well, you know, a good question, a good answer to that is that it's less is better. So this year I decided to just cut out all the things that were distracting me from the real things that I wanted to do, which was write and act and be creative. It's awesome, I love everything I do, but I, I noticed that especially when other people wanted my time, I was willing to give it more than really devoting the time that I needed to do the things that only I could do, right? So, I mean, you know, you have to be kind of ruthless with, with yourself and have your goals and like cut things into smaller pieces. I love to-do lists and I, especially to-do apps, which I own all of them and I don't use them after about five days, right? So, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about because I mean, I do know what you're talking about, but I, I have the hard, I literally, the thing, the top of my to-do list is make a to-do list. I, I can't, I am horrible. I'm you horrible. You have to organize yourself. I can't, back. I'm not, I'm a Libra, I'm all over the place. Oh, I can't, you're I can't. so Libra. I, I'm such a Libra. So Libra. Any other Libras in the house? Anybody? Wow. Right? Best people on earth. Continue. <laughs> anyway, so I, you know, the best thing to me when I, when I had a really hard problem was I had a group of friends and we'd do goals and every week we'd get together for breakfast. And they were, they were career goals. I talk about this uh, in my book, but it's the only reason the Guild got made was that I got shamed every week by showing up to this group. And the only thing I had was like World of Warcraft and they were like, directed a short film, you know, wrote a script, got levels 52, you know. <laughs> so I guess if you have goals that you're, <laughs> it's true. It's Save really my party from a demon <laughs> using a healing spell. So if you're like frustrated and you feel like you're not like pushing yourself forward, I think um, basically get five people to be accountable to and like just make sure every week you're meeting and you're, you're pushing forward even an inch, it will feel like accomplishment. And the, if you can't be, if you can't discipline yourself, that's why like when I really get into a rut where I'm not doing anything, which believe me, I do, it's all, it, it, I put on a good show, but sometimes I'm a lazy ass. Um, I will just go like, okay, you gotta go take a class. So I took stand-up class earlier this year. I took singing class. I would took you know, some improv and I just got myself into the habit of showing up and, and producing. And that really got me more and that got me back on the self-motivated track a little bit more because like, we're not perfect. And we, there's a lot of TV to watch. So. Stranger Things. Oh, uh, I, ha I have, I, I got obsessed with Chef's Table. <gasps> Chef's table is so good. Uh, I'm gonna watch it next week. Come on, calm down. Anybody who wants Stranger yes, Things? Yes, everyone yet? loves oh it. Oh my god, it's my know. 80s wet dream. It's so great. Oh, I don't so want to hear good. That. Okay, you just now you're Man. thinking about your. You think they should be paying me? I've been plugging their show <laughs> all day long. I had two panels for four years, and it, I started talking plugging about more Stranger of it. Things. You're plugging more. You were plugging in the other plugging Stranger too? Things. Uh, it's okay. so good. I'm going to watch it. It's whatever. Okay. I to watch British baking show. You gotta go make some baguettes in France, girl. I'm really obsessed with baked goods clearly lately, okay? I should take a class, but not at, but I don't wanna blow my load before I go to France. Sorry. I don't want to spend my yeast before. You're not making it better. You're not, that, that did not make it better. Next question. Next question. Next question. Oh, God. Okay. Two, oh, we got two hands here, but I'm, 
Okay. Oh, you sacrificed. That's very sweet. The ginger man, please stand up. Uh, I missed that, by the way. What? I miss your ginger. Oh, well, I was just um, going a little blonde, you know, yeah, trying it out. Um, so, uh, firstly, you know, if any of you guys need to come to New Zealand. Uh, oh, are you inviting me to a con in New Zealand? I'm inviting all of you because come November, you never know. So are you inviting me? I'm inviting you and... Do you have the authority to do this? Because... <laughs> How big is your house? That's yeah, crazy. You and 14, all 14 of your friends. Do you live in the Shire? Yes, absolutely. You're a liar. <laughs> I'm going to show up with a bag like, where's this? Oh, it's a hovel. That, you know. that, that does exist, by the way. I know, I know. Oh, Listen, good. I have another Pinterest board. Um, <laughs> uh, so my question is, um, how would you get started on a pet project? Like, we, what's your casting off point? My, 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 um, I will go to a coffee shop and make myself sit there until I write down some relevant things. <laughs> Um, I guess, you know, it's really hard to do anything, guys. Everybody's got a good idea. And then when you start digging in, you're like, oh, this is work. I mean, it, it, nothing good is ever easy. And that's what I, you know, a lot of my friends who write, they're like, well, I have a great idea. And I'm like, are you going to write till the end? And I said this to myself, too, because I had like 15 unfinished projects. And this year, I was like, you got to finish. So I finished already like three, three things already. And that's not, you know, I got to go rewrite them and everything. But I literally forced myself to finish. And... I think giving yourself a time limit is really important because if it's just to say Morpheus, I'm going to write a novel and then 20 years goes by and I don't know, maybe not, hopefully not, but um, you could, it's really hard. So I think, you know, if you have a project that you're passionate about, whatever it is, sit down and, and make a timeline. It can shift, but at least you have goals. Um, I mean, I think that's, and then break it down into smaller pieces because if you just like look at a novel and it's 400 pages, you're just going to like throw up and watch Stranger Things, you know? <laughs> Yeah, it's too much. It's too much. It's for so hand. good. But if but like the, the, the only reason I got through my book, because I was hyperventilating, I was like, OK, how many chapters does a normal book have? All right. That's 15 to, you know, 15, 17, 20 chapters. All right. How how many pa how many pages are in a chapter? I literally mathematically just cut it into pieces. And I was like, all right. So you could do a rough draft. You could write a thousand words a day and do a rough draft of a chapter every two weeks. And then I looked at my calendar. I mean, this is the only way I got through it, you guys. Um, and that really helped me. If you're not an anal retentive, uh, that might not work for you as a person. <laughs> and maybe you need, and then go get a group of five people and be like, help me accountable. I mean, those are my two keys, support and being, then then breaking things into smaller pieces because nothing that's, the thing that's long term is uh, it's going to be done in a day, and you really have to have the perseverance to, especially at like two third mark, you just get so depressed and you think it's just the poopiest thing ever. Neil Gaiman has a great thing about that. He's like every at the two thirds mark of everything, everybody thinks it's the worst idea invented. Every writer, it's because you get into the hard like you know trying to get toward the end. You're you're nodding. Hey, we got a writer in the house. Yeah, it's the painful like just tear my heart out. I'm gonna go watch a lot of British baking show and avoid life a little bit. But getting you through that hump, you just have to do whatever it takes. And, and uh, that would be my advice to you. That was really long. Okay, bye. <laughs> Next question. Next question. Oh, writer. We got the writer here. We got a mic coming to you right there. Mike is coming. Uh, I like oh. your hair. Thank you very much. Uh, so my big question for you was, uh, what's been your favorite project to date that you've been working on lately? Well, to date or lately? To date. Okay, so in my life. So yeah, let's go today. Yeah. Okay, today. Um, wow, that's really hard. You know, I'm so lucky to have worked on sets that I really, really love people. I mean, Supernatural was such an amazing experience. Over, f It was my longest experience on a show. That was four years I was on that show. So How, how many episodes did you end up doing? I ended up doing, I think, nine or ten or nine something or like seven. that. Yeah. So it wasn't, I wasn't there on it like a ton, but I would always come in like two, three episodes a season and just be like, hey, guys, Jared, lift me, you know? <laughs> It's a really good job, you guys. <laughs> and that was a real fan. The, 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 the set they have is like a real family. So that was an amazing experience. And the Guild, of course, is my, close to my heart because that was like seven years of my life and really just made everything I've done. Um, I guess Dr. Horrible was my favorite experience. If I had to be like, oh, what was the height of you, your uh, fulfilling, you know, as an artist? I, I think Dr. Horrible. Because it was outside the system, but I was doing everything I love with people who are just amazing. 
and the spirit of joy around that project um, was just something I don't know if I'll ever equal because it was just like Renegadeville, you know? We're making something, you know, with... It's during the writer's right strike, right? strike, so we're like, stick it to the man. I love sticking it to the man. I realize, like, I have a real hard time working in the system. Like, I don't know how to play it. Uh, Hollywood is really... <laughs> I got to learn how to play that a little bit better, but... But if, I, but if I'm just punching them in the face, like, I can do anything. <laughs> anyway, so that's my favorite um, to, to this day. I don't know. What do you, what's yours? What's your favorite project? Uh, to date or that I've worked on lately? <laughs> um, See? It, it was a very interesting way to word that question. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. You never asked that question? No, I have. Well, I think I have. I think I, I mean, well, now I'm asking it. I, I want I have, to but, know. But, well, you, yes, you are. Um... I don't. I don't know what. What you've had so many I mean, the good pro- projects. I, I've been. I've been so blessed. I. Yeah. I mean, literally. Uh, obviously, Chuck was the thing that. Uh, Such a good show. Chuck fans. Such a good show. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it was. I mean, it was one. It was super hard fought battle for five years. I mean, whether it was us get, almost getting canceled every single year. Uh, I auditioned for the sister part. Did you really? I did. Oh, you know, we might have talked about that. By we the way, about by this. the way, this is actually this is actually a great. This is a great story. I mean, I think it's a great story. Always. So it will be. Uh, Felicia and I met on the very trip that was oh, that's it. Yes. to Birmingham, where uh, we went to what was that con? It was, it was Star, uh, con? Star Fury. Star, Star Fury. Fury. Star Fury con, con in Birmingham, England, with where, Mark Shepard. With Mark Shepard, Adam Baldwin was there. Uh, Summer Glau was Summer there. Summer Glau, yeah. Uh, who else was there? I can't remember. I Mir- Miracle Indian- Lori was there. Miracle Lori. I remember I got so drunk and almost threw up Indian food all over. Because that would be bad. for Indian food, but then I ate too much and I danced. And I, w- I-, I-, I get drunk after one drink, guys, so I wasn't like a, a lush or something. It's fine. No judgy. You can be luscious. No fine. judgy. No anyway, judgy. Lush- yeah, that's where we away. met. I forgot. So we yeah. met. We met on that trip, and that was the trip where... Uh, we were we were coming up on the, on the finale. I think I, I think it was season two. <gasps> that subway thing you yeah, the did. The subway thing. I so I had a panel. That. So Adam and I, Adam and I had like a panel together or something, and then I had another panel. But like, I was like, we've already answered all the questions that we could answer. And so what I went to the I went to the <laughs> I went to the people. Literally, I'd worked it out. I figured out where a subway was because the 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 the. the Finale, the five dollar finale foot long deal that 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 Wendy Farrington, who by the way still works with us here at HQ, was a part of kind of spearheading. Um, was the finale was that that Monday, and so I was I I went to everybody and I was like, hey, would you guys all want to just I, I sat in my panel I said, hey, instead of an- answering any questions, would you guys all want to go march over to Subway and go get some sandwiches? And like two hundred and eighty people, no. we all just got up and we marched to Subway and the. The poor, even though we called the people at Subway, that was, by the way, like maybe it was in the middle like, of it was like, Birmingham, like England. Birmingham, they were England. all told like this, you know, yeah. kind of, not really like that, but anyway, close enough. And close, and we and we gave them a heads up, like, hey, a bunch of people are gonna come get sandwiches. We walked in there, and I, I felt like, I mean, I think we even sang at one point. We we're like, the ants come marching one by one, <laughs> hurrah, hurrah. And we all marched into this like weird mall area and they had this subway and the looks on their faces, they were like, what in God's name is going on right now? <laughs> what is going on? And we, and we, and no, we and made then I was inside and they're like, hey, but Zach's the over at Subway. Yes. That, it really, no, they, they, I was like, Zach's over at Subway making sandwiches. <laughs> and I was like, what? And we all went and we're just staring at him. <laughs> Making sandwiches, like you're just cutting the bread in just that cut, weird sort of bread. like yeah, that, that we serial have. killery yeah, way they do. Yeah. <laughs> like, Got a cheese, it. white cheese, white cheese, joint cheese. What do you want? What do you want? <laughs> anyway, this is not really prolonged. Who are we kidding, guys? It's yeah. not. That's All right. <laughs> Next um, question. Or did we? Have, did you finish? No. No, that was it. Oh, that was good. Okay. I, I don't know. Oh, there's a very uh, pale hand up there. Yeah. The Fellow pale, pale hand. The pale handed. Yeah. Uh, speaking of different goals, you're trying to reach and acting first of all do you have any advice to aspiring actors and actresses here well it's really hard (laughs) if you really 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 love it do it um make sure you're not doing it because you want to be famous and that's the one thing i always tell everybody because it's this is a career you know and you have to really want to do the art of acting not just be like hey i want to you know i want to be on the cover of a magazine i mean you know, there's ways to do that other than acting. 
So just make sure the craft of acting is what you love. That you would, if you couldn't make a career out of it, you'd be doing, you know, little theater and community theater in Topeka or Mississippi. Like, you know, that's what I love. That's why I fell in love with performing is because I did like the core score number seven. And I was like, this is the best thing of my life. So like I would be, I would, I would give you uh, that advice. And then I would always be like, the business will try to kill the joy that got you into it. And you have to understand the business is separate from the art form. And you have to maintain the art form at the same time as playing the business. Um, and then just work really hard. You have to take class. You always have to be learning. I mean, that's what I, I turned, you know, just last year, I was like, oh, you haven't been in class in a couple years. You haven't been, at, you haven't been doing it. You need to, if I was a marathon runner, I'd be running every day, right? And the same thing about violin or any kind of art form, like you have to treat it like it's a craft that you have to keep up. And that's just my philosophy that I've, I've latently gotten into because the best people are either performing every day. I mean, like you're an amazing singer and actor. You never stop doing that. Whether, you know. Well, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't always have the opportunity to sing in the things that I'm doing, but I, but I love singing. I, I, yeah. I sing every day just for shit. It's just your fun, for right? Yeah. Because yeah. It's, part of your li it's part of your soul and your life. So I guess I would say that. And then if you do not live in L.A., Get as much experience not in L.A. as possible before, or in New York. Like, get a reel, get, get all your business done, and get, don't come just naked to L.A. Like, <laughs> it's very hard. Literally and figuratively. Yeah, don't do naked. A lot of people yeah. get a pounce on that. That's not good. That's... And make sure you do something else besides acting that really fuels your self-worth. Because it's very hard when you're just kind of going out to auditions, and you, you'll do 100, and you might not get a job, to still retain faith in yourself. Whether you're just like a baker or, <laughs> I'm really obsessed with baking, you guys. Um, or a singer or a potter or like you just have a job that you do on the side, like web design or something. Make sure you have something that after an audition that's traumatic, you can go home to and like, be like, well, that happened. Let's make some art or something. Because uh, that's, you know, I think that's really valuable because the business can be very discouraging of it. But if it's your passion, do it. You know, don't, I, I mean, that was really discouraging advice. But it's no, no. really, really hard. That is 100% accurate. And if you really, okay, and if you really want... No, seriously, it is. And if you really... And by the way, one of the best tests of how much you love it is if it's not... If you can't pay your bills with it, but you still want to do it. Yes, that's great. That was much more better summary than mine. No, no, no. No, no. no. You it's explained true. her question. I'm just saying... I'm just adding to that that, you know, if you really... If you believe and you tell people, I love acting, great then you should be fine acting in a community theater play. I grew up doing my whole life. I'm sure you did as well. You oh, yeah. Know, I did school theater, community theater. I loved it. I could not, in our little 120-seat house theater in Ojai, California, I loved it. I would, I would do anything I could there. Obviously, I wanted to do more, but if that, if that never happened, I, I still think I'd still be going there. I'd be doing my day job, and then I'd go and do that, and yeah, I'd go Yeah, you do perform. it for fun. Yeah, so I think that's a litmus test. And, and just treating it like it's something you need to do. Because if you're just looking for the job, like if you, unless you're lucky to get on a series, like you're not acting that much when you're, they're paying you. So you make sure you're doing something that, that fuels that during between the times that people are hiring you. That's my practical advice. Next question. Uh, oh, back, back. Back, back. Hey, you know, Harvey. Janice? Yep. <laughs> oh. Uh, Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you literally could have dropped the mic right then and i'd be totally fine with it that was it that was i mean talk about timing wow. that was out. perfect uh i was wondering what it was like and were there any downsides to going from a more niche fan base like in the early years of the guild to a much more mainstream fan base after you did supernatural and uh dr horrible um i mean i think that's a really good question you know i think fame and uh recognition and that's all that thing that you think is awesome <laughs> there's a lot of not great things about all that stuff about people knowing you but not knowing you as a person um and the, the guild was very niche and i was so hands-on i knew all the fans by name practically and um you know i think supernatural has been why i loved it so much not only because the job and the people involved but the fan base is so amazing and so inspiring to me um, and a different kind of, you know, fan from the Guild, which was a lot more male and uh, a little bit older, like especially with Supernatural, like young girls, that has been so Im impactful to me, knowing that I want to impact young girls and inspire them to do things um, that are not outside the mainstream and push the envelope about what it, it means to be a geek or a scientist or, you know, uh, uh, just in general, just breaking the rules a little bit. Um, so I think... 
the fan bases and the, those kind of projects uh, have been really awesome because I feel like it's just been gathering just more and more people who are like-minded and who I would love to have a conversation with. I think the most traumatic adjustment that I had in my life was when Geek at Sundry launched. Um, and I, was, I wasn't really, like, the guild was on YouTube, but it wasn't, that wasn't where the fan base I had, like, one-on-one -on -one it was. We were on the forums and, like, Xbox and things like that. So getting on YouTube and being on it so much and being more of a personality, that was really actually very scarring to me in a way because it was a different kind of way of perceiving um, me as a person. Uh, and, uh, and I think YouTube audience was a different kind of person, and it was more exposed to just a general... Way, and I think the feedback was really hurtful because it was a lot of negativity. Like, nobody's going to YouTube comments to make friends, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> nobody. You're just going there for a big old kick in the face, really. <laughs> and, um, and having that sort of mass feedback and been on a platform that wasn't really necessarily my native world and being portrayed in a way that I didn't feel 100% secure. Like, I'd rather be a character any day than my per my who I am. Uh, that was really, really hard to adjust to and I talked about that in my book especially like some of the negative things the floods of negativity like really made me want to quit I mean I'm surprised I'm still here <laughs> I could be in France <laughs> um so I guess you know you just have to protect I cannot yourself. wait to taste your baguettes I know I, they're I, gonna be so good literally and that's so not a euphemism guys <laughs> calm down but jong jong you know pitch you uh so I guess that would be the one thing that was hard to adjust to. I mean, it was great because I'm exposed to a lot more people, but they didn't know where I came from. They were just like, here's this cute girl being shoved in my face a lot um, as a personality. And them not knowing my intentions and how grassroots I had grown and how the only reason I did this stuff was because I just liked entertaining. You know, it was really hard. I don't know. Have you ever experienced, you know, I'm sure you experienced that a lot. Like, when people don't know who you are as a person and then just assume things about you, that you can't just chase them down and be like, well, actually, you know, it's, there's not enough time in the world, but you want to because it's like, no, you don't understand who I am as a person. Uh, yes, no, I, 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 no, that happens all, look, that's, that, is one of, that is one of the downsides of whatever celebrity is, right? Whatever level of that, people, people see you, they assume things, you know, and unfortunately things like Twitter, 140 characters can't quite express this is what I mean by this. This is what I stand. This is what I, when I'm, when I tweet this, you want to misconstrue what I mean. This is what I mean. It's so difficult to do that. But to be perfectly honest, uh, I, I, well, look for a, I knew that going into the job. I, unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of people who become famous and then, and then they're soured by the fame. They go, Oh my God, if I knew it was going to be like this, I never would. It's like, excuse me, uh, sorry. Uh, dipshit you knew exactly what you yeah, were yeah you knew into. what you're getting into that's there what have you been wanted decades and decades and decades of people who became famous before you and for you to play the ignorance card now is i, I don't buy it i'm sorry if you want to go be an actor or a rock star or anything that comes with that a level of celebrity you got to know that comes with it so own that work with that and and honestly one of the reasons why I wanted to do this, wanted to do HQ and wanted to do these intimate kind of panels that are fan generated was because this was the only, th that I could find and the, the world we live in, the only time I could find where I could actually speak to people and say, hey, this is who I am. Yeah. It's yeah. not five seconds in an autograph line. It's not five seconds in like a smiles for smiles booth or whatever, which by the way, I hope you guys do plenty of. <laughs> keep, keep going doing that. Seriously. No, but Fun, by the way, really. but it's, it's all, it's all, that's all, those are all good. But the only time that we get to actually sit and have a conversation oddly aptly named a conversation for a cause uh, is it, with you guys and go hey guess what if you prick me i bleed i'm a human being and i and and you need more explanation on the thing that i tweeted or the thing first question of the night expound on that boom done because and but you know we could do it on periscope or we could do it we, there's plenty of, there's things that we could do that on well nowadays i mean yeah. live stream that's the reason why my company Geek at sundry does twitch streaming is because yeah. i got so fed up with the youtube world <laughs> to be honest with you that i started streaming on my own just as like can i just have something that makes me feel like i'm in touch with people again and the reason why i did this was i have a family online and i just started doing it by, by myself and i'm like oh my gosh i can ban people who are assholes and, <laughs> and the other people in the chat who I like can ban assholes. And we can have a protected environment where we can communally 
set the tone. And like, that's yeah. why we started the professional, the business side of the Geek Center, which has the same tone. No, no asshole. Like you can't be in the chat. We'll ban you. I'm yeah. sorry. And if you think that's draconian or you have a problem with it, we'll listen to the, but if it's clear that you were a jerk, either don't be a jerk or you can't play with us. And the fact that you can have that privilege of yeah. like making something safe for yourself as yeah. a person yeah. as well as the community, I think is awesome. And, and then also being seen because that's yeah. that's the thing. You're, bre you're breaking down barriers. There's so many weird barriers that exist. And by the way, there's some very real barriers that exist between fan and celebrity and all that stuff because, yeah. look, uh, unfortunately, there are, there are some fucking nutty fans out there that uh, literally... And we're only one person and we can't spend... Like, I can only maintain five... Right? five friendships really like, i'm not a good friend for one of my people exactly. like yeah. i can't we're not you can't be enough it actually is sad because it would love to be enough for every single person we meet um but, but it's not, just not there's the, not enough yeah. humanity yeah. so yeah but the fact that we can create worlds like this online or offline where we feel like hey we're all in this and together and we're all of like minds and we're all trying to accomplish something together yeah that's what's amazing about social media and as much as you could say the horrible things about it social media gives us the opportunity to do that and the more we concentrate on the proactive parts of it and the, the good parts of it. Um, it sort of takes the taint out of, you know, the abuse and all the other things that go along with it as well. But get draconian, guys. Get super draconian. Yeah, I why not? It. You don't need to please everybody. That's what I, you know, <laughs> what? <laughs> Boy. Next question. Next question. Oh, you over there. I see you too. I'm going to get you. Hi. Hi. Are you New Zealandy too? No. No. <laughs> Oh my God, you said that with such disdain. I you were like, God, I wish I was a Kiwi. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. I'm actually from Austin. Hook em. Oh, hook em. Yeah. Um, I want to say, <laughs> hook em. The f it, what? That's, oh no, it was funny. It was cute? It was adorable. It was sportsy. Yes. It's not the devil, you guys. It's a long oh, hook em horn. horns. Yeah, okay. Sports. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you, Zach, for doing this. Thank you, Felicia, for Pleasure. being you and being here. Thank you. I had read that you were going to be voice acting in the um, comic book adaptation of Chew. Chew, yeah. Is that still happening? Can you give us some information about it? Yeah, I don't know what's happened to that project. Have you ever did a project and you're like, what happened to that thing? Uh, all the time. Yeah, okay, good. I did that thing like two years ago. It was amazing. David Tennant it is, isn't it? But I've heard no uh, plans, and I love Chew, uh, the comic. Um, I have been doing a, a lot of voiceover lately. I actually can't say some of the projects, but they're actually very cool. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I actually have five projects. I just kind of in my head. I've been doing so much voiceover this year because I actually have time to do it. So uh, later this year, I'm going to be doing a lot of voices on cartoons and video games and all that stuff. So look out for that. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the question, right? That was it. OK, good. Uh, I don't know what the hell is going on with it. <laughs> I'm hoping it comes out. And I'm sure it's going to be great because it's a great comic book. Um, but you know, if I hear something, I'll tweet it. All right. Yeah, sorry, that was an unexciting. Next uh, question. Uh, oh, yep. you. Hi, front row. Your name is Jill. That is an OG nurture, by the way. Is that first it's, generation? Yeah, it's old. Well done. Nice. It's well nice. done. Um, so I love Geek and Sundry and everything that goes on there. Thank but you. I especially love the scripted things uh, with um, like Spooked and Caper were two of my favorite things. Oh, thank you for that. Um, so do you have any plans uh, with anything like that? <laughs> yeah, no, thank you for that. Those are my passion projects. Um, you know, unfortunately, uh, given the environment of scripted and on the web, it's kind of took a huge nosedive, to be honest with you, sadly, because you can't just make scripted for $5. That's awesome, you know? It's just really hard. Like, the Guild was an exception. It was, like, one of the first things, and I actually had to pay people out of pocket to keep it going. And if you're a business, you can't be like, hey, show up for five. You know, you just can't. So my goal this year was to get some projects together so that I can make those bigger scripted stuff, um, either through Geek It Sundry or on my own. We'll see. I don't know. Hopefully next year some of those will happen. Um, Geek It Sundry has been so busy with the live. The live streaming has gotten so popular. Like, that's taken over a lot. Um, but just I hear you. Like, that's my dream, to only make scripted. And so... You know, you have to, unfortunately, the business model has to support it. And I think the last several years, a lot of digital content, because nobody knew the formula how to make something successful, they're like, well, I can't spend two hundred dollars or three hundred thousand dollars on that, but I'll give a, a single vlogger fifty thousand and that'll be my budget for the year, right? I mean, I don't want to throw around whatever. I'm not gonna get too businessy, guys. I could do this. I could do a power I could do a PowerPoint and I could <laughs> guys, the metrics are definitely clear here, the demographic. 
whatever, I could do all that. Anyway, what I do think is awesome, though, is that lately um, there has been more money poured into the idea of developing scripted online. And a lot of these SVOD services, people need exclusive content. They need bigger, you know, they're getting away from that sort of like very cheap, quick kind of content. And we're going back to maybe that stuff that I, I basically was known for, the Guild and Dr. Horrible. So that's what I'm very excited about. And I want to be in that business um, as a creator, a producer, a writer, actor. So that's definitely a goal of mine. And whether it's not going to happen immediately, but hopefully sometime next year, all these projects I've been working on all year would happen. And hopefully you'll like it because that's exactly the kind of stuff that I love too. Thank you. Bada bang. Uh, next, we have time for one more question. Uno mas. That was Spanish. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, there you go. You're the only person. I mean, I was only looking at you, so I don't know. I'm sorry if I ignored other people with hands. Uh, uh, first off, thank you, Zach. Thank you, Felicia. Thank you, Felicia, for bringing your baby phone. This is, guys, <laughs> this is called Farty Peach. He's a Japanese peach gnome. If you look up on YouTube, YouTube peach bottom Japanese, you will see the most traumatic fake documentary video of a fake G CGI peach ma man. Just look it up. Okay. Clearly was enough to compel her to buy the case. Now, <laughs> my friend got it for me from Taiwan, but I love it more than anything. And some fans sent me, okay, this is a true story, guys. A fan sent me a, a stuffed one. I'm going over, but this is important. Go over, go a over. A stuffed one that looked like this. It was a stuffed one. Not kidding. You turn it over, and it had a butthole you could put your finger in. <laughs> this is a children's toy of a peach bottom with well, an actual bottom. The Japanese have been ahead of their time for a long while now, and... If you need a little butthole... Anyway, uh... What was your question? So, your, your question, question, sir... Uh, just real quick, could you speak any little more about uh, Mission Science Theater? And also, if it's possible, give a shout-out to my buddy Fernando. It's his birthday. Fernando? I heard it's your birthday. <laughs> um, Mr. Science Theater. <laughs> Mr. Science Theater's awesome. Uh, like I said, I wrote on four episodes. I'm so excited. Guys, the worst movies ever. Um... <laughs> There's going to be a panel on site uh, at 8.30 8 tomorrow night, which means I can't actually go to any part. Oh, no, Saturday night. So if you guys were doing a signing um, in the afternoon at the Shout Boost, and then we're doing at Petco Park, uh, where the Geek at Sundry and Nerdist, we're doing a little panel there. Uh, I don't know what time. I think it's at, like, 5 or something. I don't know. Just look at the schedule. And then but you don't have to have a badge to go do that, and Joel and Jonah and I will be there. And then Joel and I will be doing a panel on site at 8.30 on Saturday night. You probably have other things to do, but we're going to be funny. So um, I, I'm just so thrilled to be a part of that. And, you know, honestly, Joel is exactly who you'd think he was. He gets on the phone, and he's just so sweet about it. He's like, guys, this movie is so awesome. There's this, you know, a pterodactyl, and it's, like, carrying people. And I don't know. It's just awesome. Like... He loves these movies in a way that you could tell that's not spiteful. It's not making fun of the people who made the movie. It's just like loving everything about it that's bad. And that's what I love about the show. It's not, it's not disdainful of people trying to make a movie. So I'm really excited. Hopefully, on, and all those events are on Saturday. So if you guys have time on Saturday, find me at one of those events. Um, I posted all my info on, the fa on my Facebook page. So if you want to come see Joel and Jonah and me talk about it, uh, please do. And thank you, Zach, for having me yet another Ladies year. and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause to Felicia Day! <laughs> Felicia, you're the bomb. Thank you. Yeah, let's, let's clap thank her off the stage. Thank you. Don't forget your cup. Don't forget your cup and your phone. Get out of, get out of here. Get out of here. Get to the, oh. See, she just gave birth to it. That's what happened. Felicia Day! Uh, did you all, was that fun? You all enjoy yourself? Fantastic. Thank you all for coming to Nerd HQ. Uh, anybody, uh, anybody here? Uh, for, uh, I'm sure Eric asked this before. First time, first time Nerd HQers? Fantastic. Second time Nerd HQers? Uh, interesting. Third time Nerd HQers? Fourth time Nerd HQers? Fifth time? <laughs> Fuck yeah! Any six timers? From the very beginning, yes, yes.
Yes. They, uh, raise your hand, honey. Stop it. He asked you. He's being honest. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for continuing to support us and believe in us. And we hope that we will continue to bring you everything that we can. Every panel, every, every bit of merch, every video game. We want you guys to have the most amaz amazing experience you can this weekend. So thank you for believing in us. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend here at the Comic-Con, either here at HQ or elsewhere. God bless you guys. Have a great night. <laughs>